Good morning and welcome to another edition of Plastic Models by a Regular Dude. Um, this is going to be the first in the next series of Plastic Models for Beginners. And this one is going to discuss um, modeling from reference photos. <clears throat> kind of give you an idea of what to do, what to look at, and uh, just some things to consider whenever you're going to uh, um, model something and try and replicate what you see in a picture. Uh, there's a number of ways of doing it. Uh, for instance, say you were doing an aircraft or an armor model and you don't have an exact reference for the one particular thing that you want other than say something from a, a decal sheet or something like that, a color scheme in a book. Um, you have to get a little bit creative and you have to combine uh, reference materials. For example, if you were doing um, an FW190 and you're doing a particular color scheme that there's not really too many photos of, if any, um, so you can't get a good grasp of what that particular aircraft uh, might have looked like in, in, in real life during service. So what you have to do is you have to kind of compile a number of sources and pull from that so you can get different views um, of the aircraft above, below, sides, close-ups of the engine um, area, the cockpit area, the wing roots, stuff like that, and just get all of this different uh, stuff <coughs> to um, kind of figure out how things wear as far as paint, um, how things, you know, like flu where fluids leak from, uh, where problem areas are for leaks. Uh, you know, some vehicles, you know, they're notorious for, or, or aircraft are notorious, notorious for having places where, you know, maybe the seals weren't that great during the design per, um, stage of the vehicle. So you have leaks and stains and all that kind of stuff. So that kind of, that's kind of a general, um, replication let's call it uh, you take a number of different sources and combine them to make whatever you're trying to portray um, as realistic as possible then the other method is um, actually duplicating a given photo now again most times you're only going to have one angle from the photo but depending on the photo and with a little bit of added research on the same type of vehicles from different angles, you can come up with something that will replicate the photo uh, fairly well. And that's what I'm going to focus on mostly today because I have some examples of that. So without further ado, let me change my camera around and we'll take a look at what I'm talking about. All right, <clears throat> choosing the subject. So you need to figure out what it is you want to build and uh, uh, from a photo and there's a number of different sources to do that uh, number one you need to choose what it is you want to build obviously uh, whether it be a specific vehicle specific aircraft um, vehicles or troops from specific battles uh, from theater of operations you know um, you want to model something from the North African campaign <clears throat> from the Pacific theater of operations from the uh, European theater of operations um, whatever you need to choose you know something that interests you uh, you might even find a particular photo that you would like to replicate. Um, so once you've chosen a subject, um, and it's always best to choose something you're interested in, because that way, you know, you'll just have a little bit more fun putting it together and, and uh, going through all the work of painting and detailing and all that. So once you have that, then you want to collect some references. And there's a number, number of different types of references. And here's some of the ones that I use. Um, first, uh, unit histories. Uh, this here is a unit history on the 
uh, 76th Infantry Division um, from World War II. The reason I have this book is my grandfather was in uh, the 76th Infantry Division. And these are a good source of actual period photos along with the history um, of what was actually going on at that given time. So, for instance, you know, you've got a um, water purifying equipment. That'd be a great subject. Um, you've got different uh, uh, post-war, immediate post-war photos of uh, meeting with the French and, uh, and the Soviets. Um, you know, an armored car passing by kids. I mean, there's just all kinds of different... Um, Here's a good one here, a uh, uh, Sherman with Calliope rocket launcher crossing a uh, bridge. You know, so that's that's one form, unit histories. It's a good source, but not only does it give you the, uh, the actual photo, but it gives you the context and uh, what was going on at the time. Um, there's also publications, print publications like uh, Squadron Signal publications. They've been around for a really long time. They have a huge series of books, really photo oriented and illustrations, and uh, they tend to focus on specific vehicles. Like this one here uh, focuses on uh, the Sherman tank. And uh, they're really good for the photos, and they talk a little bit about the differences in, uh, in you know, different vehicles. But as you can see here, great opportunity. It's an M4 mid-production, 75 millimeter gun. Um, shows it with extra stowage, with foliage for camouflage. Um, just really nice, you know, photo of the vehicle in use. Same here, same here. These are really good resources, and uh, lots of really good photos with the accompanying information on what particular uh, vehicle it might be. Um, there's other publications like Osprey. Um, there's there's all kinds of, of different ones, and, and with a renewed interest in models over the last few years or the last number of years, there are tons and tons of uh, references out there. Um, another uh, reference um, that you can use that you just have to be careful is um, other modelers' work. For example. Um, Kalmbach Publishing, which is really uh, big into the uh, model railroading um, hobby, has published uh, books, for example, um, How to Build Dioramas by Shepard Payne. There's just some other Shepard Payne books as well, but it shows uh, some nice photos of the vehicles um, in use. The only thing is, though, is you just want to use it as a reference for maybe techniques and stuff like that because sometimes uh, the actual subject matter can be incorrect in accuracy if accuracy is what you're going for. If you're just looking to duplicate and make a nice looking model, then yeah, this is a good, uh, this is a good source. So that's another example. Then, of course, you have the internet. And there is a ton, a ton of uh, information on the internet. I mean, it can get down to specific models of vehicle. You know, like just taking, you know, a specific Sherman that was manufactured at the Ford plant or whatever. You can find walk arounds, which give you good detailed shots and close ups of all the different areas of the vehicle tons of different photo references on the internet. Just type in whatever subject you want, say on Google, hit images, and boom, you've got tons of them. So that is another um, resource. And you know, you have you know general type resource where you type in Sherman tanks and you'll just have a ton of Sherman tanks to choose from. Then you can even narrow it down to the walk arounds and, and it'll take you to pages where it just photo by photo going all the way around the vehicle looking at the different details and you know you can see stuff like you know weld detail and rivet detail and bolt detail and just all that kind of stuff 
So that is another way um, uh, of references. Okay, so let's talk about my personal example of really my first model kit that I built uh, using photo reference. Um, I wanted to build a uh, Sherman tank with the rocket launcher on top, the uh, Calliope rocket launcher. So in doing my research, I came up with this particular photo, which is pretty interesting because it actually shows it in use. Um, it's an M4A3 medium tank with the T-34 Calliope rocket launcher on it. Good photo, and it gives me a good um, feel of what the vehicle is. You know, it's there's a lot of things going on in this picture, and was one of the reasons why I chose this. You know, there's fuel staining all over the sides. The uh, national insignia on the side, the star, has been blacked out to uh, eliminate, you know, um, potential target on the side of the vehicle. Um, you can see the wiring uh, to fire the rockets. There's you know extra stowage and boxes, extra wheels on the front of the vehicle. Uh, there's even a German helmet right here hanging on one of the uh, lifting hooks. Um, so there's a lot of things in this photo that was that I found really interesting, and I decided I want wanted to uh, um, replicate. So I chose a kit. Uh, because of that, and uh, the kit I came up with was the Academy M4A3 Sherman with the, the rocket launcher. And in looking at the kit and looking at the photo, there were some things I noticed. And this is where a photo really helps and allows you to kind of, you know, expand a little bit in your modeling endeavors. Uh, for example, the kit tracks um, were not this type of track here. The ones that came in the kit were rubber chevron tracks and which were fine for the for the vehicle, but I wanted to duplicate the vehicle so I had to figure out what kind of tracks these were and then um, purchase some to put on the kit to add to the accuracy in duplicating the photo. Um, so that's one helpful thing with a photo is you can really get down to the nitty gritty and, and really make it look, you know, a lot more accurate. So that was the vehicle I was wanting to duplicate. Now it just so happens that the Academy kit comes with this very decal set in it um, for the uh, 714th Tank Battalion. And this one here is called cold storage, and I was actually able to um, duplicate that pretty well because it came with the decals. So here is a photo of the finished kit as comparison. Okay, uh, this is a little bit smaller, but you get the idea. Um, so the additions I made to the vehicle. Um, First, you know, like I said, I, I changed the tracks and used this type of track, which was, I believe, the T34E1 tracks. Could be wrong, but I think that's what they were. Um, so I was able to make that a little more accurate. I mounted the tow cable in the same way as it is in the photo here, hooked to the front little uh, tow pins there, whatever you call them. And then I added this uh, board, which was a common practice on Sherman's, across the front here to help hold up all this extra stuff. Um, I put the helmet there, just like it is in this photo here. Uh, I added the two road wheels. Um, I didn't have a box exactly like that, but I did have a box, so I get the general idea of it. Uh, there is a um, sandbag here so I put it there um, right here it looks like a um, tripod which I haven't put on here yet I'm going to order a you know 
weapon set so I can actually add that and then put the sandbag like it is here um, and then also there's a uh, uh, it looks like a, a what's called a flimsy it's a type of uh, fuel or you know water storage container it's made out of thin uh, tin material um, as soon as I get some of those I can add that right there which will just kind of totally finish it off uh, but then I also was able to add the firing um, the wire control system to fire the rockets um, loop wire there piece of wire there so with a photo you can just really go to town so to speak on adding a lot of detail and getting um, a vehicle or a model that looks pretty close to the uh, to the real thing and as you can see you know I kind of um, posed it in the same way as this just so I could you know make a good comparison so that's you know a good way to kind of fine-tune your modeling skills is by actually duplicating an actual vehicle in a photograph. Um, it gives you something to really focus on and you pay attention, pay a little more attention to the details and you can just come up with something that's a little more interesting than just say something just a generic tank. So that is my example. So with that, let me uh, gather up my other stuff and I'll show you what my plan is for the next installment of Plastic Models for Beginners and what the project's going to entail. Okay, so here is, you see a photo of an M10 tank destroyer from World War II. And this particular vehicle is from the 808th um, Tank Destroyer Battalion. Now, the reason I chose this is because in my reference book for the 76th Division, there is a photo of, uh, of this vehicle uh, because it was attached to um, the division during part of the war, uh, during uh, the early part of April of 1945. And, you know, I chose this kit because, number one, I like the vehicle. I like the, uh, the M10 tank destroyer. I like pretty much anything built off of the um, M4 uh, medium tank chassis. And there's a lot of cool stuff going on with this vehicle, okay? And starting at the top, okay, number one, you know, you've got uh, one, two, three, four crew members with just the regular steel pot type helmets, uh, the M1 um, steel helmet. Then right here you can see another crew member that has a tanker helmet go on. So there's a little bit of variety in the figures there. Uh, in the back, you can see here there's a lot of stowage. Um, and those particular cans right there are German um, jerry cans. So uh, looks like they're fuel cans um, and there's a whole stack of them. Looks like a makeshift rack has been added on the back uh, for... Uh, all those cans. Um, on the back right here there's a tripod for a machine gun and then these right here which are grousers which are added to the tracks uh, for slippery conditions <clears throat> to aid in traction. Then you have a lot of crew storage going on right here and you can see a little bit more over here it looks like but you know it looks like you've got <clears throat> tarps or blanket rolls going on right there um, you know uh, musette bags, haversacks, whatever you know backpack type items right here for personal stowage for the crew um, moving forward you know obviously a pretty weathered vehicle uh, you can see here that the thin uh, mud guards up front are slightly bent um, just due to you know running into obstacles and just you know wear and tear um, it's running through a river so it's dirty but it's not real caked with mud so 
you know that gives you that gives you the opportunity to to really do a good job on the you know the running gear and tracks without um, ruining the, uh, the you know so you can still see the detail. Then in the front, one of the things I really like about it, you've got one hatch closed, one hatch open with the crew member squatting in front of that. Uh, but one thing I really like is this uh, hedgerow cutter right here. Um, it was a device that was developed in the hedgerow country of Normandy during the D-Day invasion so they could get through the hedgerows. And all it is generally is like angle or I-beam type iron that's cut up into points and welded on the front of the vehicle so they can plow through the hedgerows. Um, sandbags on top of that and then right here what looks like a big chunk of turf or um, bush or something like that that's stuck on uh, looks like a couple of the tines of the uh, of the hedgerow cutter so this one appeals to me for a lot of reasons there's a lot of extra stuff going on uh, a little bit of ba battle damage but not too much obviously a heavily weathered dirty vehicle um, with you know crew members uh, 50 caliber machine gun on the top so there's a lot of stuff going on here that I really like plus it has the added benefit of being uh, a vehicle that was attached to my grandfather's division so that just adds to the interest for me immensely so that is what I want to um, reproduce and the kit that I have chosen to reproduce that with the first step is to choose an appropriate kit in this case um, I'm using the relatively new tool Tamiya M10 tank destroyer and I'm sure you've, see, you've uh, seen me or heard me mention this in some of my previous videos uh, as something that's been in the stash because this is I've been saving this one for that particular project now in comparison with the photo there's a number of things that are going to be changing for instance, as you can see here, here's all these bolt type attachment points with the grousers. Now, in the other photo, the grousers are faced the other way. Okay, they're vertical instead of horizontal and they're more forward with the machine gun tripod being mounted back here. So that'll be something that I will have to change. I may have to do a little scratch building, whatever, to get it to conform to that layout. Then I'll have to build something for the back, for all of the uh, fuel cans. I have to add all the stowage, uh, personal items on the side of the vehicle here. I'll have to have make sure I have the appropriate and enough figures. Uh, I'll have to add the uh, hedgerow cutter for the front. And then something else that I noticed in the photo is the tracks are different. The, I can't remember what the numerical code is for these tracks but these are large flat rubber blocks sorry about the phone large flat rubber blocks the ones in the photo that I'm using as you can see are rubber chevron type okay so I'm going to have to look into getting some different tracks. Now I have some rubber tracks, like the single length, that may work for this that were left over from the Calliope kit, repurposing unused parts. Uh, but I'll check them out and see if I like them and if they'll work. Um, here's the grousers I was talking about. Horizontal here, vertical there. Uh, with looks like they are the mounting point starts here. And it goes back one, two, three, then the machine gun tripod back here. So those are just a few of the things that I'm going to have to um, change if I want to replicate what's on the photo on in the photo. So I'm going to have to collect up um, all that stuff. So this video here was just to try and get, give you an idea of what you need to do and what you need to look for if you want to duplicate a subject in a photo. So I think I'm going to end it here with that. Um, so if 
you know, you're going to follow along and if maybe you're going to do a kit of your own kind of along the same time, not necessarily this one, but something similar or, you know, whatever, um, you might think about finding your photo, figuring out which kit you'll need that most closely duplicates what you're wanting to um, portray and then any extra stuff you might need like different tracks or extra stowage or whatever figures start collecting all that up and then you'll have it all ready to go so you can start the project so with that i've got my base kit here i have some of the stowage some of the fuel cans i'll take a stock see what i have and see what i need to order or buy and uh, take it from there so that's the end of this video so the next video i'll take a look at all of the um all the materials that i am going to be using to actually duplicate that photo with this kit so as always if you have any questions or comments or even suggestions or anything like that please leave them in the comment section below and i will answer them as quickly and efficiently as possible and uh, hopefully help get you going on your own um, photo duplication so that's it for now from plastic models for a regular dude uh, plastic models for beginners series four and i will see you all next time